What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. In case you missed it, last week I posted a long-form narrative video that went over all the ins and outs of my vintage cube. What were some of my philosophies, the boxes and sleeves and tokens I chose, things like that. So pretty much all the details and all the customizations of the cube. One of the comments I received in the, well, in the comments was that I should do a mock draft of the cube and I thought about it and I really thought it was a great idea and then I sat down and I was like okay let's do a mock draft I'll draft all 45 cards um and then I realized in order to do that we would have to have a pack of 15 then a pack of 14 then a pack of 13 all the way down to a pack of one um and then we'd have to do that for all three packs and that would be kind of tricky so I believe the only way to effectively do that is to literally use 365 cards. But that doesn't feel correct either because halfway through any given pack, you're going to have repeats, right? So after the first eight cards are picked from any pack, you're going to have the remaining seven cards from that same pack. So it wouldn't be a new pack. It would be the same pack. And that's true with the next pack and the pack after that as well, you know, ad nauseum until you're done with that whole pack. So what I proposed instead was that we take single packs. So I have three packs here of the vintage cube and we'll go through them and we'll determine what our first picks might be. And this gives you guys a way to see what my cube has in it. Uh, what versions I've chosen along with what my pick would be. And then we can talk about it. So we got a Thespian Stage. This is basically for the Dark Depths combo. We have Natural Order, always a classic. Stirring Wildwood. We have a Burst Lightning. Uh, not super exciting, but kind of a mono red staple, right? Like it's a shock with upside. So Monastery Mentor with the new Borderless Art. Got Wrath of God, a classic. Uh, I chose this version because, again, one of my philosophies for my cube is using retro frames. And this is actually the only retro frame black border that is not in the modern frame. Previously, it was revised 4th edition, 5th edition, 6th edition, 7th edition. <laughs> and then I believe 8th edition was black border. I uh, could be wrong. Actually, 8th and 9th might have been white border as well. There's a lot of there's a lot of core sets. <laughs> it's not always super easy to keep track. But anyway, it's Wrath of God, and it was reprinted in Dominaria Remastered, so I put this version in. I before that I had the collector's edition version, which was about a hundred bucks. But I do prefer rounded normal magic corners when applicable. So I replaced it. It fulfills the same role. And, you know, once I get the opportunity, I'll probably pick up a beta, Wrath of God, and put that in here. That's the goal. And we have Giant Killer in the showcase frame. Grave Titan. Gonti, the Lord of Luxury himself. Sakura Tribe Elder in a secret layer frame. Phantasmal Image. We got a Rootbound Crag. An Escape to the Wilds, one of the best red green card drawing spells ever printed I, I would argue and uh so good it was banned in standard correct this card was not legal in standard after after a certain point guardian of new banalia there's a lot of cards that fit this role basically this is just the uh two mana white creature that has a discard effect that lets it protect itself right but this one also has enlist and it also has whenever it enlists a creature you descry too so it's it's definitely upside usually these are three ones um but i like the versatility and the you know multiple other abilities that this one offers then you have tooth and nail last pick so nothing super exciting in this pack this is not the most exciting pack there's no power there's no duels there's nothing uh, power adjacent, like a Grim Monolith, a Mana Vault, a Soul Ring, things like that. There's also two very good green cards. We have Natural Order, and we have Tooth and Nail. Both of these are very, very good in the green deck. I think Natural Order is probably my personal pick here. Um, and whether or not the next two packs 
would be um, in the same deck as this one. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's a better way to go about it or a worse way to go about it. The thing is, it's hard to build a deck with three packs. You're only picking three cards. Um, so, you know, saying like, oh, I'll take this because it goes with natural or it doesn't really have a ton of value. Whereas if I look at a pack independently, um, you know, with no context, it's, it's a lot better to get an evaluation of the cards within. I think we're going to take natural over here. A little, a little bright there, but that's okay. All right, so next pack. Oh, Thoughtseize. Again, <laughs> really great to see the Thoughtseize in the retro frame. That was a super pleasant upgrade in Time Spiral Remastered. We got Lucka Bound to Ruin, the showcase version. Or these were borderless versions. I'm not sure which they were. I think the showcase versions were like the ink splot versions. I think this is literally just borderless. It's kind of confusing, but I actually replaced Garrick in my cube with Lucka because they do very similar things. Um, they can both be four mana planeswalkers with three loyalty. They're green based. They both plus one to add two mana, essentially. They both negative one to make three threes. And negative four on this one is kind of interesting. It's just, it's a removal, right? Uh, it deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So if you have five, five, it deals five damage. Ulamog, the infinite gyre, borderless uh, double masters version. Factor Fiction. We chose this version of Factor Fiction over the original because... Uh, controversial artist decisions, we'll say, and we'll leave it at that. Um, but I, I also like this art a lot. I think this version's really cool, and it's a retro frame from Dominaria Remastered, so no harm done. Overgrown Tomb. Um, I would kill <laughs> for Shocklands in the retro frame. I think that would be absolutely fantastic, and I think they would make a million dollars. Kaya Intangible Slayer. This card is interesting because it's only rare, but a six loyalty planeswalker with hexproof that has draw two cards for zero um, and then a negative three that exiles a creature or an enchantment that you make a copy of as a one one white spirit is very good. I, I like this card a lot. <laughs> There's not a ton of decks it can fit into, but if you're building any sort of Esper or, um, you know, Mardu or Abzan decks, then like it's just a really solid planeswalker. Phyrexian Metamorph, obviously the borderless version. This was also um, oh, the secret layer version. We had the borderless version from Double Masters in here originally, but then we had uh, we got this secret layer, so then we just replaced the Phyrexian Metamorph in it. And we got Hellrider, a classic. Fractured Identity, another classic, and we went with the secret layer version of this as well. Another card I would love a retro printing in. And Nickel Bolas. I say and as if that's the last card, but it's not. <laughs> Nicol Bolas playing the Ravager flips into Nicol Bolas the Arisen. And the beautiful thing about these dual matte sleeves is that they're completely opaque, so no risk of spoiling. Rampaging Ferocidon. This is just one of the best red cards you can ask for. Um, this is just like basically Sulfuric Vortex on a creature, and he's uh, utterly oppressive. Not fun to play against, but, you know, there's a lot of cards in the cube like that where, like, you you want to play with the strongest cards possible, and that's just the point of the, the cube. So we have Woodfall Primus. Oh, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here, it looks like. A classic. Classic to reanimate. We have Tovalar's Huntmaster. Um, I could see cutting this guy because it's it's very similar to Grave Titan. It's it's very Grave Titan adjacent. They're both 6-6s six that make two two twos basically um the other side of this guy is gonna get thrown at me but it's very strong uh it's a seven seven all of a sudden and then whenever he attacks you make two wolves and then another wolf or werewolf you control fights target creature you don't control in my experience that hasn't been super relevant but you're mostly just trying to make four power and creatures every turn just like grave titan and then we have time twister Again, this is a collector's edition, international collector's edition. This is not a, a beta time twister, so don't go don't go crazy. But still 
decently pricey card. Unfortunately, a lot of the collector's edition cards went down in price once Magic 30 came out. That nightmare of a set. Uh, the damage just <laughs> keeps piling on, so that's unfortunate, but still, very, very cool card to have, and they just look cool. Like, I think collector's editions and international collector's editions look great, even if they're not original beta, so... And finally, Miglaw's Maze Crusher. Um, 4-4 for four, 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 3, enters the battlefield with 5 oil counters on it. Remove an oil counter, it gains Vigilance and Menace. Remove 2 oil counters, and it gets plus 2, plus 2. And remove 3 oil counters, and it destroys an artifact or an enchantment. So, very versatile creature. Just another green creature that can come into play and destroy an artifact or an enchantment. Plus, has other abilities as well. Very reminiscent of, like, um, Savage Knuckle Blade, which is one of my favorite favorite creatures with three abilities a three three a, th a four four for three with three abilities so but i think if we're taking this pack in a vacuum um i would okay so let's let's do both actually there's no harm in doing both so i think if we're taking this after natural order i think we're taking woodfall primus but if we're taking it by itself i think we're going to go with fractured identity I think Fractured Identity is one of the strongest cards in the cube. You basically just take your opponent's best permanent and get a copy of it. Um, so it's both removal and card advantage at the same time. Anytime you're able to hit a Planeswalker with something like this, it's just insane. I'm a big fan of Fractured Identity, and I think that's what we are going to take here. And the last pack. Let's see what we got here. Very inelegantly lifted. Chandra Dress to Kill. This is not a card I've had a chance to play with yet, but a three mana Chandra with a loyalty three. Uh, plus one, add a red, deals one damage to up to one target player or planeswalker. Exile the top card of your library. If it's red, you may cast it this turn. That's another plus one ability. They're both plus ones. And negative seven, exile the top five cards. Uh, of your library you may cast red spells from among them this turn you get an emblem with whenever you cast a red spell this turn wait hold on whenever you cast a red spell oh this emblem deals x damage to any target where x is the amount of mana spent to cast this spell so if you cast a red spell for three the emblem deals three to something not bad it's a three mana planeswalker <laughs> uh young pyromancer a 2-1, and when you cast an instant or sorcery, you make one. You guys know what Young Pyromancer does. I don't need to read Young Pyromancer. Interrupt an adversary. A great addition to the mono white deck in, in cube. Um, just a, basically a pump spell or a 3-1 lifelink for two. Porcelain Legionnaire, another 3-1 for essentially two. Doretti Scrap Savant, classic. Sedg Sedgmore Witch. Um, this card just does a lot of things, right? It's just a 3-2 menace for 3, um, which is great in case you want to ninja it to a Fallen Shinobi. That's one of the main reasons I like having this in there, because it's just an invasive creature you can put down before turn 4. Uh, Ward is pay 3 life, so if you want to kill it, you're going to take some damage. And then whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, you make a 1-1 pest. So just a great way to make some creatures and have some board presence. Uh, Tezzeret the Seeker. So not bad. Celestial Colonnade. Another classic. This is the Expedition version from Zendikar Rising. Flame Slash. This is the Store Championship version of Flame Slash with a dinosaur on it. So I don't know how you can pass that up. Shambling Vent. The second Oath of the Gatewatch. Uh, or the Battle for Zendikar Creature Land. Or Zendikar. We'll just call it a Zendikar Creature Land, I guess. Bloodbraid Elf in a retro time spiral remastered frame. Worm Coil Engine in a retro Brothers War frame. Opposition Agent. Um, this is a card I'm iffy on. I'm not sure if I love it in the cube or not. It's a 3-2 three, for 3 with Flash. And then you control your opponents while they're searching their libraries. But then while opponent is searching, they exile each card they find. So you may play those cards um, for as long as they remain exile. So if they're looking for, if they crack a fetch land in response, you can play Opposition Agent, then you control their search effect. And then you can just take the land and play it for yourself, or if it's a Demonic Tutor, what have you. Um, it has some some good synergies with a lot of things that you do in the cube naturally, which is Search Your Library. Gale's Redirection. Um, I like having counterspells that cost a little more mana like this. 
that do significant things when they resolve. All right, so it's five mana. Exile target spell, just same as countering it basically. Then roll a d20 and add that spell's mana value. So I'm going to roll a d20. Let's say I hit a six. Okay, and then I let's say I counter your, your cruel ultimatum. So what is that? 13. One through 14. You may cast the exiled card for as long as it remains exiled, and you may spend mana as though it ran of any color. So eventually I will get that spell. If it's 15 plus, then you just cast it for free, which is pretty sweet. So again, just a cool counter spell with a fun effect that like basically steals the opponent's spell, right? And just lets you either cast it for free or spend any mana to cast it. Lodestone Golem, a classic in the... Okay, so that's it. Um, I think if we're picking a card to go with our first pack... I think what we're going to take here is either Blood Braid Elf or Warm Coil Engine. Warm Coil just because it's great to ramp into, but Blood Braid because it's red. I think we're going to go with Warm Coil for this, this particular deck. If this is our deck, that's what we're taking. If our first pick was Fractured Identity, I think we're just taking a Celestial Colonnade. Um, but if this is our, our just our pack by itself... I would be very upset. I don't think it's super strong, but I might just take Opposition Agent to try it. And I also like Gale's Redirection. Like, I, like these are two cards I've put in pretty recently. And I think they would just be fun to try. Like, a lot of the, a lot of the time, <laughs> I'm not sure. I draft my cube so infrequently that I'm not sure if I'm picking cards because they're the best choice or because I just want to play with them. And that's why I added them to my cube. And I think that's fine. Because cube is not necessarily the most competitive format, right? You're literally playing to do cool stuff, to have fun, and to play with some of the most iconic cards in Magic's history. So sometimes I just want to play the cool cards. Um, that being the case, this is not an easy pack. I think it might have been Worm Coil Engine as well. Like I think that's just a good starting point. So I think Worm Coil doubles as both my pack, my my pick for this pack by itself, and my pick if it was my third pick for this this opening pack um and the reason being it just enables a lot of strategies like if you're bl building with metal worker or Tolarian academy or any sort of mana ramp it's a great easy card to ramp into because it's colorless so things like mana vault grim monolith soul ring they all help you cast it um mana crypt but also if you have like a channel it's also a great card for that metal worker helps with that. So it, it opens you up to a lot of strategies in the cube and it's a great direction to go. Cause then maybe this Tezzeret comes back and you know, obviously the mono blue artifact deck is a, a good place to be. And then you can also have the lodestone golem. So there's two other, other cards that could potentially come back to benefit you with the worm coil engine. But um, yeah, those would be my picks for these, these three packs. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I would love to hear what you guys think, what you would pick. Maybe you'd have different versions in your cube. Maybe you do have different versions. Let me know about those as well. I'd love to hear all your thoughts because the cube uh, has so many different facets and so many different ways to customize. Let me know what you think and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys.